Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the preview show. We have stage two of the Volta Algarve after Sam Bennett did the business for us today. So stage two is our first hilltop finish. So it's Alto de Foya, claim that everybody should know very well if you've been paying attention for the last few years. The stage is 181 kilometres, and it's got 3,200 metres of climbing it. Uh, it's a lovely sunny day again in the Algarve. Temperature's topping out at about 26 degrees. The wind... Nothing really to worry about uh, for the riders. It's all going to come down to the last 30k. So the last 30k, we have three categorised climbs. We have a Cat 3, a Cat 2, and then the Cat 1 finish. Uh, so the Cat 3, first of all, that is 5.5 kilometres at 6%. It's quite a relatively OK climb. It's a fairly standard Cat 3. We've got a couple of steeper points within it, uh, but nothing that's going to worry any of the riders here. The Cat 2 climb, however, is quite a tricky little one for people to get up. Last year, I think we saw Rowan Dennis dropped here. Uh, it starts with a real punch, a real bang. Uh, if I can just focus in on the start of it, start would be here. And immediately we are faced with gradients 15.4%. So straight from the beginning, uh, it's really difficult. And if you've got you know, legs which aren't particularly good. If you don't get into a rhythm quickly, you will soon find yourself out the back door and it's going to be game over. This section here, you can see the road kick up. It really is quite horrible at the start, 17%, 18% at this point. It's a tough little climb. It gets easier in this section here. You can see the yellow uh, signifying it's a little bit easier. We're down at 5.8%. And then right before the crest, it again kicks up nice and steep into double digits. Uh, it's a tough, tough climb. 3.5k, uh, 7%, but it's probably harder than, uh, than those numbers suggest. Then we get the big Cat 1 climb, Hilltop finish, Alto de Foya, which is 7.4 kilometres at 6%. So not the hardest climb in the world, but it's come after two kind of fairly tricky climbs and we've seen before, you normally get a relatively small group of riders at the top here. So we come straight out the little town, Monique, and we're straight into the climb itself. It actually starts off quite tough, kind of 6.3%, 9%. But what I want to do is just focus out a little bit to show you what's going to happen. As always, I think every time we've been here, this is one, two, three, four, five, six times in the last six years, every time it's a headwind. This is a very windy part of the Algarve, and this section here is always headwind. We are talking about 19 kilometres per hour, 20 kilometres per hour. That is a tough, tough headwind for anybody to deal with. And basically, it stops attackers getting away early on the climb and just about guarantees a kind of smallish bunch sprint at the top. The climb, we have seen it before, it is steady. You can see from the, the colour here, it's a nice yellow all the way up, which indicates we're talking roughly about kind of 6 7% for the vast majority of the climb. And the headwind is just going to slow everybody down. You get out here, you can see how exposed it is. At this point, once they make this turn, you can see the last couple of kilometres is actually a, a crosswind, uh, a strong crosswind, so we will see the, the riders bunch into kind of echelon form. I think we saw that last year as well. It's just, it's a demanding climb. It's not the hardest climb in the world, but it nearly always ends in a kind of bunch sprint from about 10 or so climbers. That's if it follows the same pattern in previous years. In previous years, we've seen teams control the pace on the climb, and then we get this kind of smallish sprint. We don't have the same sort of teams here this year. Normally, it's at the start of the year when uh, everybody wants to come. All the big World Tour teams are here. with loads of climbers who want to do well. That's not the case this year because of where it now sits in the calendar. So do we have a team that's going to control the race? The answer to that is maybe a surprise for some, but yes, we do. And it's probably going to be W52 FC Porto who take up the race. You saw them today, even in a sprint stage, wanting to control the end of the stage. This is their World Cup. And because of where it now sits in the calendar, they have a real chance of actually winning this race, which would be huge for the team. Continental team to beat the Connect Quick Step in Ineos, it would be amazing. I'd love to see it. Uh, can they set it up? Big climbers in this 
midfield, we've got from the World Tour teams, we've got Rui Costa, who's obviously Portuguese, so big motivation. We've got Lemmy, Lemmy Cam, Camner from Bora. Kaspar Askarin, people will want to mention him, but you know we're not too far out from Flanders. I don't think Askarin's going to be anywhere near uh, this one. Genietz from FDJ, who's been climbing well this season. Ineos have a, two riders, I think. Souza, who was meant to go to the Giro, but is now here, who's clearly a a really talented climber. And then we have their youngster, Carlos Rodriguez, a uh, very talented young Spaniard who has impressed me. Uh, he was very good in Provence this season, did a really long turn on the Charlie Renard climb. Odd Chris and Eichen from Wonte, they could really do well in. And then we're going down a division. So now for the Pro Contes, you've got Remy Mertz, who went well recently. Uh, unfortunately, he lost some time today, could buy him some freedom. We've got Diego Rosa and Ellie. Uh, Gisbert, Elie Gisbert from uh, the French team, Arkea Samzik, both could do potentially well. Gisbert obviously was, was second in the Spanish race recently uh, in Valencia. He's got a good chance. Sean Quinn, uh, another one of the Axon youngsters, uh, he won on Sunday, I think it was, in a 1.2 race over in Portugal. Good climber, very talented youngster, will be in the World Tour, I would think, next year. And then we have the W52 boys, Joao Rodriguez, Johnny Brandao, and Amaro Antunes. Antunes, we've seen before at this race, go very, very close. Uh, I really want to see W52 light up. It would be fantastic to see. Now, best climber on paper, Ivan Souza, doesn't have a good sprint. As I've mentioned, it's likely to end in a kind of smallish sprint. So Souza is the best climber, but he's unlikely to take this victory. Again, I'm looking at W52. I think that they're having those three climbers. It's going to give them a tactical advantage in the end. And for me, I want to see Brando take the win. Uh, for so long, he's been such an amazing climber. Never had the opportunity to step up. Uh, but I want him to see it uh, win tomorrow. And I want to see W52 shake up those World Tour teams. Okay, stage two is over. 